Hi guys, today we find ourselves on an adventure instead of an urbex. It's a dark adventure, a sad adventure, also grim. Um, it's still a court case here in the Netherlands. We are trying to fight the building and oh, I've already found the, <laughs> the cemetery we were looking for, so um, I'm lucky. But um, in fact, this was also part of it. We, uh, are trying to find the old monastery here in uh, Velp. Many children were abused here between the 19th and 20th century, from 1895 till 1990. But most cases were from 1895 till the mid-70s of the previous century. Uh, we'll try to find the graves, we'll try to find more information on the graves. So far it's not known uh, who are buried beneath it, but they did place some stones. And we shall do our best to give you all the information needed about this case that needs some justice till this day. Thank you. called the Goede Herder. A terrible tragedy happened. We have lots of information for this video. So there's also a documentary about it called the Goede Herder, which explains all the justice and wrongdoings which happened here at this very place. This is a cemetery where 200 bodies were found. And as you can see, there's only a few graves. Meaning that the nuns put the young children which uh, died because of well, being overworked in horrible <laughs> situations. They had to work around I think it was 8 in the morning to 10 in the evening, something like that. Then go to sleep. And no free time. So as you can see there's, well if I can count it. 50 uh, three, stones. 15? 50. There's no, there's no 50 stones. All, all of them are supposed to be 50 stones. Both sides. No. Set, so Three, six, nine, ten. Ten on that side. Some Three, work. six, nine, and also ten on this side. So ten graves and two hundred corpses, which were found here. Everyone got dig up and well, That's had cool. a proper burial. This is the monument. We uh, even made a monument for it, a big rose. It was revealed uh, a few years ago uh, to honor all the girls who have lost their name, their, their lives here. It says Noem mij bevestig mij bestaan, which means uh, call me and acknowledge my existence. Yet they still haven't done that till this day. The girls aren't a lot of given a name a lot or of a girls got, identity at all. A lot of girls got name changed when they uh, went in the monastery. And when they died no one uh, told uh, anybody and they just threw them in a grave with others and bam! That's when, why they found 200 bodies in 10 graves. So. Well, Redwin is supposed to be an archive that shows all um, the girls who have died here and all the other monasteries. There were five in total here. Originally six because Tilburg moved to Somer. We will try to visit all of them. Um, but this is the most famous one because uh, it has the monument and most of the bodies were found here. The youngest was two years old of the children who were buried here and the oldest nine. Um, there were eight children buried here. Most of the children did not survive the convent. It's very tragic. It can all be found in this book. It's a Dutch book so I don't know if you can all read it but it's a very good book. Um, it really shocked me 
I read it within a week. It's really good. I also got most of the information through this book. I tried to do my best to translate it in English and give you the proper information needed about this place. How we found this case is through my grandmother. We often visit her and we watch the documentary about uh, the girls of the Good Shepherd, as it's called here, the Meisjes van de Goede Herde, together. And she actually knew a girl who was sent to one of the congregations. We don't exactly know which one that was kept hidden from society. Uh, the poor girl was 15 years old, uh, born in around 1934. And she was a sister of uh, a friend of my grandfather's. Uh, she had uh, the worst time here, or, well, in one of the convents. Uh, her brother uh, told my grandfather she did survive. Uh, she didn't return home. Uh, she was ashamed. She was afraid of being shamed. And that's how we found this case. Now we also need to talk about the history of this place. Uh, it comes from uh, Le Bon Pasteur, uh, a French uh, monastery uh, that was um, invented. <laughs> I think invented is. Established is a better word, back in the 17th century by a priest called um, Une. Une. I'm not good at French, sorry. Uh, he wanted to save the fallen woman, the woman who became pregnant out of wedlock. Uh, he called that saving them, but was it really saving them? They had so harsh labor. They had the separate wing from the other um, nuns, or sisters as they called them. He called the sisters uh, this, uh, a lady of love. They weren't about love, but <laughs> they were called the ladies of love. They couldn't enter the, the other department uh, without uh, the chief of department, which was one of the sisters. She had the key that separated both wings in France. And here it was even worse. Here they, um, they were even more separated. But the congregation didn't enter the Netherlands till the 19th century, around uh, 1860. But it was first mentioned, uh, the, the big one was first mentioned in 1895, but it already started in 1860. Um, the congregation was also, uh, well, it sort of died around the end of the 18th century, uh, after the French Revolution, uh, and it was re-established by another uh, sister called Maria. Don't ask me to ask to pronounce the second name. I can't pronounce it. It's so long. And, but um, she was the one who started the congregations all over the world. Five in the Netherlands, several in Belgium, uh, Ireland. In Ireland are called uh, the Magden Magdalena Laundries, I think it's called there. And uh, well, Le Bon Pasteur in France and the Netherlands it was called the Goede Herde, the Good Shepherd. So yeah, that's the beginning of the monastery. So, buried here are 73 nuns and 207 girls. 207 girls, which had to do labor for around 10 hours a day. Oh. Every day, seven days a week. <laughs> there was um, behind the sewing machine, 
and the laundries. The laundries were very dirty. The monks weren't quite clean. They also um, uh, did the laundry for hotels. They did so much. They barely had any rest. And um, well, it was mostly sewing and <laughs> and doing the laundry. Without paycheck, guys. So <laughs> these girls needed help, and they just got into into the monastery, which was quite uh, normal at that time, actually. We must also mention it's not quite clear. It's just two hundred two hundred seven girls, because the archive isn't quite up to date. It's so it says. Many of the archives of the monasteries have been damaged and have loose ends. So most of the information we still need, we won't get, we'll never get. And it's probably not even worth getting because the story itself is already too dark. You must know the girls were even being punished for working too slow or too... or being tired, uh, not eating their lunch, not eating their breakfast. After throwing up, they would even make them eat their own vomit. Well, some of them, but not all the monasteries were as bad, but most of them were. And when you're being bad, you have to go to isolary. It's like prison. Isolation? Yeah, isolation. But it wasn't just... Just an empty room. Pretty much maybe a mattress, I don't know. Or even worse. And just stay there until you're allowed to go back out. It could take up to four days before they released you. And isolation wasn't even the worst place. The worst place was the basement. Some of those places even had a basement where you could be locked up. Where there were rats and mice. And you were in the dark and they would just leave you be. They, they, they didn't listen. When you were screaming no one came. Most of those girls are still traumatized till this day. They have nightmares, they're afraid of the dark. And it's all their fault. So yeah, court cases are happening here. <laughs> but um, so far they kind of name it like uh, it's in the past, so there's not much consequences, but it's happening right now. They said it was uh, too old to it wasn't valid anymore last year in 2023 but they did appeal the appeal is going on now it's not something they want from the congregation they want an, an apology from the government they want an apology from our prime minister well we don't have one right now we almost have but he should apologize if he does that on national television they will be so happy. Ireland did it. We can do it. Hey, yes. As you can see, all the stones haven't been here, but there's another cemetery at Almelo, I think, but we'll get there in the future. But out of the 10 girls that uh, went to the convent, only two survived. Two from the little girls. Thousands of girls came, but from the little ones till the age of 10, only two survived. And why did girls come here? Well, they were either from an abusive home, like the girl we, my grandmother knew. She was also in love with a boy, that, and the her family did not approve. That was also a reason they could place you here. Um, sexual abuse was, uh, was one of the reasons they could place you here. Uh, pregnancy out of wedlock. Um, not going to school could even place you in a place like this and now it's separated but a long time ago they could really look at this place from right from the windows they could see it they could they know girls were buried here and the gardeners had to do it the gardeners were the ones who buried all the girls uh, so many just a few stones but so many innocent souls are lost also sisters nuns but those nuns, I'm sorry for saying this, but there were good ones. There were actually good ones who gave girl, the girls fond memories. We must not forget that. We must take that. But some of them were like the nun from the Conjuring series. I'm sorry, but they were just so bad and so terrible to those girls. 
it's hard to imagine those girls work all day long. Some even during the nights, especially for hotels, they had to work during the nights. They had to do the laundry, do to iron, to to repair the clothes. Um, they some of the places were so damp they would even faint while working. They would just faint. And the first one was buried here was in. 1895 and the last one is in 1973 the time that's like 51 years ago when the exorcist came out the last girl was buried here it's terrible it's absolutely terrible I, I can't imagine someone could do this and those were called the sisters of love again not all of them were bad and they were even um, well there were even ones who tried to improve it. Even one, I forgot the name, I'm trying to remember it. She had a difficult name again. I'm very bad, very bad at those sister names. But she was the directress and she tried to improve. She, she even got a council, someone who was educated to improve these places. She was amazing, yet she died of old age. But I do have to say that sister was doing well by listening to a council. Because near the end a council was living there there was even a girl who was functioning as a spy in one of the convents she would tell um, the juvenile uh, about this these places and what happened and made sure it would become better and it was hard for her even the sisters knew she was doing it but she did it and she did improve it it was stopped it was cancelled so to say to mention one thing some of the files have been mixed up uh, the big cross wasn't there that's probably an amelo um, both places that most girls buried all between well this one was between uh, 1897 I think it is and till the mid 70s they were all around 70 and at around 70s but uh, it's not clear where all of the girls were buried and which one because there were so many of them. Thousands and thousands of girls came to those congregations, but it's such a terrible word. And there were five of them. Well, six because the one in Tilburg went to Sobren. There was one in Vel. There was one in Almelo. The, the headquarter was in Leidendorp. All, and. Um, also called Soeterwoude Leidendorp, where, which was also the first one to open here. But we'll probably do that one much later because it's not near us. And there was also one in Bloemendaal. All of these girls weren't allowed to speak with each other. They weren't allowed to um, have even contact after. They weren't allowed to do anything. So so much is not known so much is unclear the only thing we know is that they have been abused they have been traumatized some of them are on antidepressants some can even make a friendship start a relationship because they're so frightened they just don't know apparently a building is still here from the monastery well we will we'll, we'll try to find it we aren't sure if we can't enter it but we will do our best uh, wish us good luck. If we succeed, we'll su succeed. If we don't, I'm sorry, but we we'll do our best. Most of them have been torn down, but this one is still standing and is a school nowadays, which is 
that direction we're heading now. And we'll see. Hi, we're back at um, our little village and uh, we found out uh, more details about the place and we even tried to find a chapel but we couldn't get into the place. There was a big lock. I think it will be open during daytime. We'll see if we can't get back there one day. Uh, first we're going to focus on Almelo because that's something we forgot about. A it was very confusing the information we found and some happened in Velp and some happened in Almelo. Uh, so we'll go back to Almelo soon, not next week or anything like that, but soon we will be in Almelo and talk about that place. We really hope you enjoyed our video and what we were able to create and to understand what all those girls now women we're coming from with their PTSD, their lives and we hope you all support them and make our government apologize to them because that's all they want. I really want to thank you all for watching this video and we hope you find the information uh, yourself. There's so much information about it and thank you all so much for watching. Uh, and uh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> yes, guys, thank you for watching. Uh, I thought maybe he wants to co <laughs> come uh, in front of the camera, but it looks like he wants to stay behind. I'm it. hidden. <laughs> we John Carpenter there. I'm um, hidden. <coughs> yeah, guys, thanks for watching. Thank you all so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. Please like, subscribe. You guys are amazing, and we wish you a beautiful day. See you guys. Nice Until time. next time. Bye bye. bye.